apologists for supernaturalism often ask four gotcha questions about the origins of the universe, fine tuning, laws and values. In this video I briefly touch upon naturalistic answers to these questions that are, in my opinion, superior to the supernatural answers offered by the inquisitors. Well I don't, because I can't. I certainly don't claim that the Big Bang accounts for the origin of everything that exists, nor would I agree that it represents the start or limits of nature. It's just something that happened about 13 and 3 quarter billion years ago, and there is no good reason as to why other natural things could not, in principle, have happened before or beyond it. Peddlers of first cause arguments uh, for the supernatural cannot rationally explain the origin of the universe either. That they loudly claim to be able to, whilst quietly sweeping the baselessness of their accounts under the carpet, or to make us suspicious of their reasoning and motives. Since the consequences of endorsing a false explanation are, more often than not, worse than truthfully admitting one's ignorance, an irrational explanation is worse than no explanation. Therefore, my naturalist answer to this question is superior to their supernaturalist answer. I take fine-tuning to be a situation wherein we have to make unexpectedly precise adjustments to parts of our mathematical models in order to account for the observational data. This doesn't mean our model is wrong, merely that it is not yet finished. Therefore, I explain fine-tuning by admitting that the natural sciences are a set of ongoing research programs rather than faultless contributors to a body of absolute truth. Attempts by theistic supernaturalists to suggest that fine-tuning is evidence of supernatural design are nothing but appeals to ignorance. Claims that because naturalists cannot be sure that God didn't do it, God must have done it. Humility in the face of reasonable limits on what we know is superior to grandiose speculations about God doing it somewhere in a gap. Therefore, my naturalistic account of fine-tuning is superior to their supernatural one. I account for the everywhere and always truth of certain logical, mathematical and scientific statements in terms of relations between our considerations and what is being considered. I hold these to be relations between entirely natural things. Assuming that our conceptual and normative considerations have essentially non-natural content, and that the laws in question entail some conceptual and normative consideration. Supernaturalists also explain laws in terms of relations between things, except they propose that these relations must be between at least one non-natural thing and natural or other non-natural things. However, as there is no good reason to assume that conceptual or normative consideration entail non-natural content, my naturalistic explanation of laws is, on the grounds of parsimony, superior to their supernatural explanation. I account for things having value in terms of our constitution as part of nature. That is, in terms of things having value because we are creatures who have evolved to evaluate things. Supernaturalists insist that values depend on non-natural predications. Usually, they claim, because you cannot derive an ought directly from an is, or because asking whether something that is natural is good is never a straightforwardly silly question. However, as one may derive an ought from an is indirectly, and because our folk intuitions regarding what is silly are neither straightforward nor reliable guides to what's real, I would claim that my naturalistic account is, 
given its predictive accuracy and rationality superior to their speculative supernatural account. I would suggest that those who strut around the interwebs hoping to convert the philosophically naive by preaching that only a spooky worldview can explain the origin of the universe by tuning laws or values are, to put it frankly, manipulative liars. I hope this appeal for further consideration on these matters goes some way to countering any influence they may have. Thank you for listening.